Hey guys, it's Dan with Farmscape Foods and Catering here again. Uh, this week I'm going to show you how to cook sous vide at home without using a circulator or a vacuum sealer. This is something that you can actually do at home with equipment that you probably already have. Um, so I'm going to get set up here and then show you how it's done. Hey, good looking. What you got cooking? How about cooking something up with me? Hey, sweet baby. Don't you think maybe we can find us a brand new recipe? <laughs> Alright guys, so what we're going to do today is we're going to cook chicken sous vide. And the first step when I cook chicken, normally if I'm not marinating it, I'm going to brine it. And the reason I do that is it adds tons of flavor, moisture, and even tenderizes the chicken just a bit. Um, so that's what we're going to start with here. And what I have, these are four chicken thighs with the bone out with the skin on. You'll need a container that can hold a liter and a half of liquid, a hard, hard plastic container or a glass. In a pot, combine three tablespoons of sugar, three tablespoons of salt, and then I have a teaspoon of fennel seed, black peppercorns, and coriander, a pinch of celery seed, three bay leaves, and three juniper berries, one onion sliced, five cloves of garlic crushed, a handful of fresh thyme, and 12 fresh sage leaves. And if you don't have any of these ingredients, don't worry about it. The most important thing is the sugar and the salt and the right amount of thyme. So if you don't have anything, don't let that discourage you um, from trying this. Even the most minimal amount of ingredients when you're doing a brine, as long as you have the sugar and salt in there, it's gonna make a huge difference. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna add a cup of liquid, a um, cup of water to this, bring it to a boil, make sure everything's dissolved and then turn it right off. Add in our onions, our garlic, our thyme, and our sage, and let it steep for about a half an hour. And then we're gonna combine everything in to this container with enough ice to bring the temperature down. And then we're gonna um, make sure there is a liter of liquid in total. Add in our chicken and let it marinate or brine for an hour. And that should do the trick. So I will see you guys then. All right guys, so our brine is ready here. I'm gonna put the chicken thighs in there. Um, it's cooled down, it's, it's, it's uh, ice cold right now, so the chicken thighs will be in there for an hour. And then in the meantime, I'm gonna get everything set up to um, cook sous vide, and I'll show you guys what you'll need to do that. All right guys, so what is a circulator? A circulator is basically just a unit that has a heating element in it, a thermometer, and then a fan to circulate the water in a container. So this is how we're gonna replicate that here at home. I have a pot with as much water as I can get. Um, in it, you want your largest pot, the more water, the better. Uh, the more water you have in there, the less fluctuation of temperature there's gonna be when you add or remove water from it. I have a colander in there to keep product from hitting the bottom of the pot. And then I have a thermometer here to maintain and uh, just check that temperature of the water. So I'm, what I'm doing right now is I'm bringing it up to 212 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. That's the boiling point. We wanna make sure it's accurate or 100 degrees Celsius. Um, so yeah, bring it up to a boil, make sure your thermometer is actually gonna be accurate and then what we're gonna do um, to replicate the circulation effect is we're just gonna move the bags of um, product every 15 minutes or so as it cooks. Uh, that way, if it's touching um, the bottom of that colander there, it's not gonna be overcooked in that one spot. So um, move it every once in a while. That's how you're gonna make sure that your cook is as even as possible as well as maintaining the temperature for the entirety um, of the time that it's gonna be in this pot. So. The next step here is showing you how to get our chicken ready to be cooked sous vide. All right, so we have our chicken out of the brine. I dried it off and then lay it down flat inside your bag. This is just a um, your standard freezer bag from Ziploc. Um, so lay out your chicken flat, add in a couple tablespoons of butter, a few sprigs of fresh thyme, fresh oregano. Our water's ready here now. Um, I have my chicken ready in the bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower it into the water um, and we'll vacuum seal it that way. Don't seal your bag completely. Leave about uh, two inches or so open and drop it in so that that corner uh, remains above the water line. And then uh, as soon as you're confident all the air is out of there, you can seal it up and I'll show you that real quick. Use a spoon or something to submerge it, making sure all the air is out. And then as soon as you're confident that it is, seal it up.
And what you can do if it's touching is you can kind of then now just separate them by hand a little bit, like so, and then drop them in. Just a quick note about temperature, guys. I had my pot at 170 degrees Fahrenheit before I added the chicken in. When I added the chicken in, it dropped to 165, and then I put it back on the heat. So that's pretty much perfect. I'm gonna check it every 15 minutes or so. When I do, I'm gonna give the chicken a spin. Um, but definitely, uh, if, if you are doing this and you have more water than I do, it's gonna take longer to make those changes in temperature. So if it's high, if your temperature's too high when you add the chicken, um, you don't have to take the chicken out as long as it's not boiling. Uh, if it's at 180 or so, say, take it off the heat, let it drop down to 160 degrees before putting it back on the heat, and then bring it up um, just a tad to uh, somewhere in between 160 and 165. Um, so if it's, if it's under, obviously you want to bring it back up to the proper temperature, otherwise it's not going to be cooked. Um, so make sure you, you do hit at least 160 with it. And if, it's, if you're over, then just make sure you are uh, monitoring it and you're bringing it back down to the proper temperature. Um, but yeah, just, just baby it, be patient with it. Um, it's gonna be in there for a few hours, so make sure that at least the majority of that is at the proper temperature and you should be fine. Once you have your chicken cooked off, you can put it into an ice bath, um, still in the plastic bag. We wanna bring this down to um, be chilled in a short amount of time to stop the cooking process. Um, so I do it in 20 minutes just to make sure it's, it's completely chilled. Um, and then I'm gonna take it out and sear them off and I'm gonna prepare some uh, chicken sandwiches for, uh, for dinner tonight. So you'll see that. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna describe to you how um, I'm gonna cook the chicken and then you'll watch me do it once I got the camera on the tripod. Um, so basically I'm gonna start in a cast iron pan on medium low heat. I'm gonna um, put the chicken in skin side down and with a spatula I'm gonna flatten the skin onto the surface of the pan and slowly render out some of the excess fat that's in there and then um, after a few minutes I'm going to turn up the heat uh, to medium high, get a really nice golden brown uh, crispy skin on there and then flip it over, get some color on the bottom, baste it a little bit with more, uh, baste it with a little bit more butter um, and then yeah let it drain and then I'm going to put it on my sandwich and eat that for dinner. Looking forward to it. Um, but yeah so I'm going to do that here um, but also I just want to thank you guys for watching again. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, if, you, if you like the content that we're putting out. Um, and uh, Duncan Farmer's Market is on this Saturday again from 9 o'clock now uh, until 2. There's going to be a lot more vendors. Things are opening up now. Uh, we're excited to get out there eventually as well. Um, so in the next couple weeks, you should see our faces at the Duncan Market as well. Um, and yeah, no matter how you do it, guys, don't forget, support local. Thank you.